How does NASA organize a party? They plan it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the picture is so funny. Okay, we're going to talk about Kepler's three laws of orbital motion. So, uh, uh, Johannes Kepler, he figured out a lot of these things. Now, these are uh, empirical, which means that, you know, they came from just looking at a bunch of data that he was working with uh, a guy, a Danish astronomer, actually, named Chico Pai. But Kepler, he figured out a bunch of really clever things. So, first of all, he figured out that planets, they move in elliptical orbits with the sun as a focus. So, they're not actually circular, they're ellipses. Uh, and an ellipse has something called a focal point or a focus so that's why uh, that's there's going to be two of them. So one here and one here. Now, he said planets move in these kind of orbits with the sun like this. But it turns out like a moon going around a planet is going to be the same thing. Or like, for example, a satellite going around the Earth, all the same. Uh, so let's actually take a look at this. I've got a little animation right here from uh, good old PHET. I love them. So PHET uh, from University of Colorado. They do a great job of this. So this is their first uh, Kepler's first law demonstrator here. So if I go uh, like this right here, I'm just going to leave it like this. There's lots of noise right here. If you want to listen, just the noise is supposed to be like the speed. Sounds like an annoying B or something like that. I'll turn off the sound. Watch carefully the as it goes around. First of all, Let's look at the, uh, this is with an ellipse here. These are the focal points here and here. So the sun is one of them. By the way, if you want to see the axes or if you want to see the eccentricity, for example, those are different things that you can use, you know, if you want to actually characterize this ellipse. But we don't need to. We're just going to leave it like this. Okay, uh, what if we looked at the velocity vector first of all? You'll notice then it gets bigger as it's going along here, and then it gets shorter over here. Then it gets bigger over here. The length of that green vector tells you how fast it's going. So you notice it slows down. Now it speeds up over here, and then it slows down at the end, and so on. And by the way, if I want to see the gravity force, for example, the force of uh, gravity here, do you notice they're equal and opposite? That's why there's two arrows going along. And as they get closer, the force is bigger. As they get further away, the force is smaller. So I hope that actually helps to understand it a little bit, although I'll take away the force. Maybe that gets a little bit complicated looking. Okay, so if I do this one right here, then the key is that, yeah, it works for any object orbiting any other objects. It could be satellite, planet, moon, whatever. And this is how it really works. However, as far as on exams for us, all you have to do is this, that if we're doing calculations, we're going to assume circular orbits. Okay, that's going to be really important and really nice for us. Turns out the math isn't actually that bad for using ellipses, but at least in the IB physics, we don't have to worry about it. Okay, let's do Kepler's second law. So Kepler's second law is all about a planet uh, that's covering. So it has to do with this speed, basically. This is what we were looking at before. So it's going to be this. Really, the important thing is going to be this one right here, this piece right here. That's going to be the one we need. I mean, a generic version is this. Like a planet covers the same area of space in the same amount of time, no matter where it is in its orbit. In other words, let's say we were timing, I don't know, uh, 10 days, let's just say. So maybe from maybe a 10-day period might, might be, uh, let's see, from here. Maybe it's going to be uh, from here, maybe from here to here, let's just say. So maybe it goes actually like this distance right here. So maybe the planet's going around in this direction, let's say. Let's assume it's going this way. Let's assume then this one right here, this one right here, we'll, we'll call this area 1. So in a 10-day period, let's just say, it goes from here to here, and you can figure out that area. Okay, well, in the same 10-day period, maybe it's uh, over here, for example. Let's just say it's over this way. Uh, well, because it goes slower way over here, then it'll be something like uh, maybe like this, let's just say. So this here would be the area swept out in the same amount of time. So let's say this is like still a period of 10 days. This would be this area here. And it turns out the key thing is this, that area 1 equals area 2. This is the key idea here behind uh, Kepler's second law. I mean, uh, consequence is this one, right? That uh, the object in orbit moves faster when it's closer, and it moves slower when it's further away. Now we can see this on our uh, Kepler's law on here if I do second law. And I'm just going to say, go ahead, I've got the sound off, otherwise it gets annoying. But watch this, this one right here, over a period of time, it's got these different places where it goes. So this is another place here, and it's going to count, like it's the same amount of actual time. So you can count three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, one, three, two, 
one. And do you notice it's here, it's counting up the areas. And do you notice the areas are actually all the same, even though they're different shapes? Turns out if you take this area and this area and this area and this area, they're actually all the same. So that's actually pretty interesting, isn't it? At least so that's Kepler's second law. Um, now, what I want to show you is one of my favorite uh, comics. This is by XKCD. It is so brilliant. I love it so much. Let's take a look. This one right here. <laughs> so let me just uh, put this down. This is XKCD, and he's awesome. So, hey, nice store. How do you keep the floors so clean? Oh, we hired this dude named Kepler. He's really good. Hard worker. Doesn't mind the monotony. He sweeps out the same area every night. ha, <laughs> ha. Get it? That is so good. That makes me so happy. <laughs> All right, Kepler's third law is this one here, that a planet's orbital period squared is proportional to the orbital semi-major axis cubed. What? Well, this is this is uh, for real ellipses, that is. What I want to show you is this. Uh, the key that you really need to know, though, is this one. That the t, q, t squared, so the orbital period squared, is proportional to... Um, are cubed. And if we assume these are circular, then it's much, much easier. Okay, so if we assume these are circular, that means that we know that the, you know t squared is going to equal something, which we might have to find, something times r cubed. This is sort of the, the idea here, is you know you have to find this one right here. Uh, so this, this sometimes happens, actually, it's quite often, in fact, on exams, you often need to derive this equation in detail. So in other words, it's quite common that you're asked essentially to find out like what's this number in front. So you might be worried about that, but don't worry because the next slide we're going to learn how to do it. So to derive this third law, well, let's actually do this. So first we're going to assume a circular orbit. Okay, We're going to assume that it's going around happily in a circle, not in an ellipse. So that means this uh, satellite or this planet or whatever is going around this other object M here. Okay, So lowercase m is going happily around in a nice circle. Well, first of all, let's look at uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation, and let's look at centripetal force. We're going to need those two equations, so I'll say Fg equals, let's see, I'll put a little subscript G for gravity. Well, remember, that's GMM over R squared. I'll use capital R because that's what I used here. Now I've got the centripetal force. Well, actually, I know the centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R, but F equals MA, so I'll throw an M in front of it. So MV squared over R. There we go. There's my two equations I'm going to need. So maybe I'll just put a circle around them so I keep them, keep track of them. Okay, well now what we're going to do, well, we're going to say, hey, the centripetal force is caused by gravity. So that means I'm going to set those two forces equal. So Fg equals Fc. Now what does that mean? Well, that means I'm going to have, let's see, gmm over r squared is going to be equal to mv squared over r. Now, I don't want any fractions here, so I would like to get rid of them. So what I'm going to do is put this one over to the right right here, and I end up with an r squared over r, which means I'm just going to have an r on the top. So that means, oh, actually, I can do something else. I can cancel out the m's, for starters. Uh, so that means, let's see, I move my r squared. Maybe I'll just show it to you just so you can see all the details here. So I'm just trying to get rid of all my fractions. So I'll have gm equals, let's see, v squared. Now my r squared, I multiply it to both sides. That means it's going to be r squared here over just r. And this one right here, this r squared divided by r just gives me just r left. So that means I have gm equals, uh, I just wrote it poorly here, equals v squared r. And that means, and I can say then that v squared is going to be equal to, let's see, I just do gm over r. So gm divided by r. Yay, so that's a piece that I needed here. So now I've got this right here. This is really important. So I can do something with this. This V squared right here, I can deal with it. It is important, though, to remember this piece so that V, the speed, is equal to distance divided by time. So what we're going to do is this. Because it goes around in a circle, well, let's find out then this orbital speed. In other words, this speed of it going around. Well, what's the distance when you go around a circle? Well, to go all the way around a circle, the distance you travel is called the circumference. It's 2 times pi times r. But, of course, the speed is distance over time. And the time it takes to go around is called the orbital period. That's capital T. So I'm going to take this and shove it into here. So that means though, I have v squared, though, not just v. So that means I'm going to have 2 pi r 
over t, but all that squared is going to equal g m over r. Okay, if I do that, then I'm going to square all this left side. So 2 squared is just going to be 4. Then pi squared is just pi squared. r squared is just r squared. Divide that by t squared. Okay, mind all that equals uh, g m over r. Now, I don't want any um, fractions down here. I want to get rid of this right here. So I'm going to move this right here to the right. I'm going to move this one to the left. So that means on this uh, side here, I'm going to have g m and t squared. Maybe I'll write those first. So I'll say t squared times g times m equals, and let's see, in this other side, if I want to take this r and move it to this side, I have 4 pi squared r squared times r, which is going to be r cubed. So I'm going to have 4 pi squared r cubed. So try that out yourself just to make sure it makes sense. It's important you can do this yourself. And finally then, I'm going to get t squared by itself, so I'm almost done here. I get t squared on its own, that means I've got to divide both sides by gm. That means I want a 4 pi squared, that one's hanging out here, over gm, and all that is times r cubed. And this is actually uh, Kepler's third law with actually with all the details. So the reason why this is really important, you notice, is that this piece right here, that was that piece we were trying to find before. Is this GM here? I just want to make sure this looks like a G and not a six. I just thought it looked a little bit like a six here. Let me just uh, fix it here. Uh, so this one right here, I'll try to make it look like a capital G here. And this is actually the derivation here. So this is the t squared equals something times r cubed. This is the something. I don't recommend you memorize it because a lot of the times the question is like, you know, get to this, show that, blah, 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 blah. So they want you to do this. And remember the key steps are this, right? First, assume it's circular. Use Newton's law of gravitation uh, equals the center. So the gravitational force equals the centripetal force. Do some magic, but don't forget to do something about your V. It's distance over time, so circumference over the period. And then just do a little bit of algebra, and you end up with T squared equals something times R cubed. There you go. You're done.